Hello, dear friend. This is the 2022 astrology horoscope for people who have their sun or rising sign in Pisces. And this year will be very special for you, my friends, because Jupiter will be transiting your first house. So it's definitely an important and potentially very positive year for you. And in this video, we are going to talk about all of the important events like Venus being retrograde in the beginning of the year, Mars being retrograde at the end of the year for two months, also the regular Mercury cycles, also the lunar nodes and their ingressions and how they can open new doors and new opportunities for you. Also, we will spend some time on Jupiter, your ruler, which is doing some pretty interesting aspects with the other planets and will also be in Pisces part of the year. So this is potentially very important and beneficial for you. You will also learn about Saturn and the outer planets and in which cases they are really, really important for you. And before we dive deeper into all of those amazing things, let me introduce you also to a brand new opportunity. It's called Mars Stars Membership. It's our new platform where you can join and you can access regular new webinars, Q&A sessions, new courses, plus access to all of my previous courses. And the best news is that we have a free trial, so you can just sign up and see how you like it. Check the link below or watch until the end of the video to learn more about this opportunity. And now let's get started with Venus, the planet of love, being retrograde in your 11th house, which is a very romantic and idealistic house. And this means that you may need to reassess all of those ideals that you may have about love, about friendship, about your community or the group that you belong to. And it's a great time for some internal processing of emotions or improving certain things that maybe are not working so well in this area or generally for making a reassessment. And this is the time when you might be especially emotional when it comes to friendships or some activities that are part of your community work or anything else that is related to groups of people. So emotional reassessment and also people will be very important. Friends or the community group or uh, peer groups or whatever. It will depend, of course, on every person. But overall, this is a great focus. Friendship and community. The next thing we're going to talk about is actually happening right at the end of the year. So for the last two months, Mars will be retrograde in your fourth house. This is pretty important because it's related to your home, your family, things related to properties. And also Mars will be squaring Pisces. So you might feel more provoked by family members or generally you may feel like you need to explore something deeper. It could be related to your childhood or the stories of your family members or now it could be the time to really solve certain old conflicts or problems with the family members. So a great focus goes to this area of your life, family home and uh, the place where you are living. Next, we are going to talk about the lunar nodes. Those are the doors or the directions of what we need to focus on and what should not be such a huge priority for us. So after the 19th of January, the nodes are moving to your third and ninth house. and They will be there for the rest of the year. The North Node in your third house means that you need to get really practical. You need to focus on the tactics, on the things that you are doing, on the information you have. It's a great time for gaining new practical knowledge and information, creating new friendships, and overall engaging with some practical things in life. 
On the other side, with the south node in your ninth house, you shouldn't think so much about strategies or the long-term big picture or living too much in the future. One of the main lessons for you is to learn to be present and to live here and now. So don't plan your life 10 years ahead and because you know sometimes this is also a way to escape living in the present or even taking some practical actions and this is not a good idea for you it's better to focus again on the practical things and to be very very present then there's also something very interesting which happens around the middle of the year july august the North Node will be in conjunction with Uranus in your third house. This is the time when something very surprising may happen in your life. It could be related to a new idea, a new friendship, or a new project that you may start. Also learning something new or a sudden interest for a different type of information. You need to embrace this. You need to focus on this because it may have a very inspiring and positive impact on your life but you also need to be prepared that uranus may bring something unexpected it may come from friends or something in the closest environment or suddenly you may need to change something about your daily life and your daily routines so again being present that's like very important for you during 2022 Next, let's talk about Jupiter, one of the rulers of your sign and a truly amazing planet, which can be so beneficial, especially when Jupiter is strong. And that is the case during 2022. Between January and April, and then November, December, Jupiter is in Pisces. So it's a great time for self-expression. It's a great time to start something new, to put yourself out there to get more active, to believe more in yourself also. And you may succeed, you may receive more recognition, and overall you may have a stronger sense of prosperity. So this is once in a 12-year event. So quite rare and important one. Take advantage, do your best, and have faith in yourself. During the rest of the year, Jupiter is also in a pretty beneficial position. Between May and October, Jupiter is in your second house. And this is the time when you may see some practical results from your work, from your efforts, and also a time when you may expand your resources. It may affect positively your income and other practical things in your life. Be mindful because Jupiter may also inspire you to spend more so it's not necessarily a bad thing but you need to be aware of that as well and jupiter is also having a couple of interesting aspects with the slower planets and that is especially important for you because jupiter will be in pisces the first one is during february jupiter in your first house with uranus in your third house great time for new inspiring ideas and then also taking action on those ideas you might be inspired by a friend or a new information that you may learn or you may get really active when it comes to education or friendship or communication or even some kind of intellectual work then during april there is a very special conjunction between jupiter and neptune in pisces And those are actually the two rulers of your sign. So they're both extremely important and they are joining together. A very, very important time. It can just be a remarkable period for personal shifts and new directions and inspiration. It can be a great time for healing as well. But you also need to remember the lessons of the North Node. So the lessons of the North Node, we already said, for you are being present and also analytical and practical. Remind yourself about this because with Jupiter and Neptune, sometimes 
You may fantasize or have unrealistic ideas. That's just one of the possibilities. So overall, I expect the aspect to be very beneficial and rewarding and healing. But we need to be prepared for the possible illusions or maybe unrealistic expectations. And the last of those aspects is happening during May. Jupiter in your first house with Pluto in your 11th house. This is a great time to do something together as part of a team or a community. Either sign up for a new club or if you are already part of some kind of community, then this is the time that you can really connect and do something meaningful as part of this community. Even if you are on your own, you may focus on something that's important for your future or something very close to your ideals. So those three months, February, April, and May, are especially important and beneficial for you. Next, we'll talk about eclipses, which are emphasizing even more the influence of the lunar nodes, which we already said are in your third and ninth house. The first eclipse is during April, and it will trigger the north node in your third house. This is the time to really focus on some ideas and new inspirational visions, but also practical things. This is the time when also you may focus on the future. Your actions or your projects or the things that you put your time into can play a major role for your future. On the other side, during May, there is a lunar eclipse, which will be more about finding the balance between focusing on the future and the present. Again, with more influence, with more focus on the present. You might want to change some kind of visions you have or beliefs or even long-term goals. Then during October, there is a solar eclipse, which will trigger the south node in your ninth house. So this is more about processing the past, letting something go, or looking at things from a different perspective. Your vision, your goals, your beliefs, even the knowledge and wisdom you have will be so important. And the last eclipse is during November. It will be again a lunar eclipse in third and ninth house with options to make changes in your present life uh, and the things that you are focusing on a daily basis. You may change some of your plans, some of your ideas, people you communicate with, or also some kind of intellectual project. So again, we have this dynamic, third, ninth house. So present and future, the practical mind and the philosophical mind. And Overall, it's important to balance them, but the most um, energy or the bigger influence, the bigger focus should go to the present and uh, again, the tactics. Next, we are going to talk about Mercury retrograde. We have three of those cycles, which are full and one more, which begins at the end of the year. The first one, January, February, will trigger your 12th and 11th house, which means that it could be a more retrospective period and um, you may work more on the past and towards the end of the cycle, you may focus more on friendships or some kind of changes in your social environment. Then during May, Mercury is retrograde first in your fourth house, then in third house which brings the focus more to family and home and then also communication, friends and some kind of planning that you are making. Then the last of those cycles is during September, October. It will influence first your resources, especially mutual resources. You need to be more careful with investments and then relationships and partnerships. During those times, it's not recommended to start something brand new or to initiate projects which you want to be long lasting. It's better to focus on improvement and reassess. And next, we are going to talk about Saturn, which will be 
in your 12th house between the 12th and the 26th degree of Aquarius. This is more like a background situation and an energy which can make you kind of more isolated in a way, more closed. You may need to process things internally. And it's not always easy with Saturn. We know that there are some requirements and we need to kind of like, you know, be present for those transformations. But it's an important part of the process. And here the key is reassessment of the past. When something transits 12th house, this is the time to look back and see this worked, this was not so great, I want to let this go and I want to take this in my future. This is kind of a, you know, focus you may have when something important triggers 12th house. And Saturn is there during the whole year. So a great time for reassessment of your past and letting something behind you and taking the important stuff with you. It's especially important to check the cusp of your 12th house if your ascendant is in Pisces. And if the cusp is between the 12th and the 26th degree, then the time when Saturn crosses the cusp of the house might be also more important. Next, we'll talk about Uranus, which overall is in a very friendly position for you in your third house between 11th and 19th degree of Taurus. Uranus from third house may have a positive aspect with Pisces if your sun or rising sign is between 11th and 19th degree. And this may feel very uplifting, very inspirational overall with Uranus in your third house you may focus on new ideas and new concepts and new ways of communication, also new friendships. So overall, Uranus is in a friendly position and can help you, especially when it comes to those ideas. Neptune is the next planet which we'll talk about. And this is actually potentially one of the most important ones because this is one of your rulers. And if your sun or rising sign is between 21st, 26th degree of Pisces, plus minus one, two degrees, this is pretty big for you. And this energy can bring you so much inspiration, also so much intuition and imagination, but also sometimes confusion, lack of clarity, messy situations so with neptune you never really know but through some kind of spiritual practices and creative work you may really channel this energy in a different way so if neptune is crossing your sun or rising sign this should be kind of like the main topic of the year for you connecting embracing the neptune energy which initially is close to you because this is your ruler but this might be the time to open even more space for this energy in your life so really really big deal and finally pluto pluto will be between the 26th and the 29th degree in capricorn in your 11th house so overall a positive influence positive supportive energy and it brings your focus to communities, groups of people, friendships, ideas, uh, some kind of visions that you may have. If your sun or rising sign is between 26, 29 degree of Pisces, Pluto will have a positive influence on your sun or rising sign. So it may feel very empowering. You may feel really motivated and also passionate, and dedicated on some kind of goal or ideal that you are pursuing. So overall, this year is very important for you and it's time to step up. It's time to take action and to move forward. So thank you very much for joining me and I wish you an amazing 2022. Don't forget to sign up for your free trial for Mars Stars membership. It will give you access to 
all of my courses, including the natal astrology course. So it includes everything you need to know about foundational astrology and how you can interpret signs, planets and aspects and houses. So we have more than 50 hours of lessons here, which will teach you everything you need to know about natal astrology. We also have karmic astrology course, which is a pretty extensive one and will help you to do more advanced readings. On top of that, you also receive access to live webinars. Each month, we are having a special webinar on an astrology topic and another one, which is a Q&A session. So you can come and ask all of the questions you have, which are astrology related. You get access to all of the pre-recorded courses, plus the future ones. And there are other surprises like monthly horoscopes. We have our community and also other spiritual courses and energy practices and much more in the future. So make sure to check the link below or go to marsstars.net and sign up for your free trial.